Welcome. Welcome on a Thursday night here in Sydney. Welcome to Live 605. I'm your host, Con Cazanzitas, aka Shave the Man. It really is me, even though we've shifted over a night, that's only for this week, of course. Um, or is it? Am I faking it till I feel it? We shall soon find out. We'll also find out if you're new by placing new in the comments below. If you're watching us on uh, YouTube, which I know a lot of people now are starting to watch us on YouTube, then just put new in the comments. Of course, you could be watching us on Facebook, either through my own personal uh, profile. I'm a glutton for punishment, I know. Or you could be watching us through the Stray Whisker Facebook page. Look, I have to say it's very cold tonight. Very cold. It's a cold, cold night here in the Blue Mountains. Uh, and so I'm going to try and make this short and sweet as much as I possibly can. Uh, speaking of cold, we have Brent, who has, uh, not that he's, he's cold or anything, but he's from Halifax, Nova Scotia, uh, in Canada. It's 5.06 a.m. on Thursday. Wow. That's great. You see? I'm messing things around. I'm fiddling around with time zones. I'm fiddling around with people all over the world, which is fantastic. So welcome, Brent. It's nice to have you on the live. I know that it's an ungodly hour in the United States, particularly in Central, I think it's Central Mountain Time, whatever. It's about 3 a.m. or 3.06 a.m. or 7 a.m. Uh, thank you and uh, welcome. If you're joining us in the United States, I know that you've run across uh, a number of um, time zones. And that's perfectly okay. We do here as well in, in Australia. Uh, and also, I'd like to um, say a big cheerio to, uh, who have we got? Dave. Dave is on here. He's, um, he's, he's a little bit late, uh, only 24 hours late. Where is the late? Now, you want me to bring you a late note. Okay, well, you know, just deal with it. Okay, you deal with it. I'll bring you a late note. Uh, who else do we have on the live? Uh, Abby. You really made me think it was Wednesday. Yes, I know. Oh, sorry, Abby. I know, I know. Um, I've got me sort of in all sorts of, in a bit of a tears. Alex, <laughs> thanks for shifting. it. Look, the truth is I shifted it for Alex. He said, Con, I can't make uh, tonight's live. This is what he said last night. So, because I've got visitors and stuff, do you think we could shift it across to Thursday night? And I said, yeah, sure. Let's just change our entire life for you. No, I didn't say that. Look, we had all sorts of technical difficulties, which I may talk to you about um, a little bit later. Damien, hey, Con, how's life? I hope all is well. Glad you're back in time for this. I just got home from work. Been working since five this morning. Wow. Wow, that's a long, long shift. Wow. Well, thanks for joining us, Damien. I really appreciate that. Um, that's um, very, very kind of you. Uh, but I couldn't do it, of course, if I didn't have my uh, performance-enhancing caffeinated beverage. Uh, this helps me quite a bit, so please allow me to just have a swig. People say, why don't you just drink it when you're offline? Why do you have to drink it online? Yeah, get a life, okay? You do you, and I'll do me. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. Anyway, as I said, if you're new, put new in the comments, um, and that'll be um, a, a real... I'm, I'm really chuffed when I when I hear that new people have, have joined uh, this craziness that is Live 605. Brendan, hello, Brendan. How are you? Hope you're well. Hope the family's well. Uh, I know you've been pretty busy, my friend, um, but thank you for joining the live. Maybe Thursdays is a thing for people. I don't know. Whether it is or not um, remains to be seen. I think I'll keep it on Wednesdays. Uh, you know, the sort of hump day, they call it these days. Um, but yes. So what we're going to talk about today, tonight, uh, is um, fakes and dupes and knockoffs. Um, I know it can be a little bit negative, uh, um, you know, this whole conversation. It can be quite contentious, but, you know, I thought, why not? Let's just damn the consequences, full steam ahead. Let me know if you know who said that. It's a very famous uh, person in history that said, damn the consequences, full steam ahead, or words to that effect. I might be paraphrasing. Uh, so what we'll do... I'll go through quickly what it is that I want to discuss with you and get off my chest, and then I will open it up and we'll have questions. Um, this is an interesting uh, topic because, again, it's one in which I have lived experience. I'm not just a pie-in-the-sky theoretical stuff. 
Um, I'm talking from you know conversations and questions that I've had with people over, over the years and so on and so forth. Um, and so we'll try and, try and sort of drill down and, and talk about it. There are a couple of aspects. There's uh, the shaving, wet shaving aficionado, aficionados and their opinion on this particular topic. And then there's the real lived experience, the world broader uh, experience of people. Because I know the people that take shaving and uh, as more than just a chore and, and more as a hobby um, have some quite pointed opinions about that, and that's fine. That's actually a very good thing. So I think, um, uh, who else have we got? We got there, the comments are coming in thick and fast, I love it. Uh, so what's Damien gonna do? He's going to have a, uh, he's going to have a whiskey. Okay, why not? It's the best way to unwind after work, just have yourself, pour yourself a whiskey, which is, um, which is great. If that's your beverage of choice. Um, and what do we got? Hello, Louis. Yes, hello. Louis, this is What's Up, Con? Great to see you. Great to see you. Well, I know I really can't see you, but I'm, I'm delighted that you're joining us on the live. Yes. Um, look, I have to agree with you. You're not obsessed. You're dedicated. Um, this is something that, I mean, I've, it's really funny. I've kind of outed myself in many ways. A lot of people that know me, friends outside of this, obviously said, yeah, What's this shaving stuff? What is he doing? You're a bit of a weirdo. Like, you know, how can you get excited about shaving? And do you really need all these razors? And do you really need all these brushes? And do you really need... No, I don't need them. I want them. Okay? That's, that's a difference. There's a distinct difference. I don't need them. I want them. And that's why, you know, everyone wants a hobby. Everyone has a hobby. So that's um, a really... It's a It's a... It's a thing that if you haven't got a hobby, get one, right? That's all I can say. Coffee is one of my other hobbies and my passions, I should say. Mm. Look, let's get on with it. Um, I, I'm mindful of, of a couple of things. Firstly, I don't necessarily want to wait around and build an audience because that will happen in about three or four years. So it's best to just dive in and, and get into what it is that I wish to speak um, to our friends uh, about tonight. Um, so there's this phenomenon, this thing that, that happens quite a bit in, in wet shaving where artisans particularly um, like a product themselves or have had conversations with other people and have said, listen, I really like the, the smell of brute. Do you think you could make something that smells like brute? Now, I'm using that because it's a very, very, very wide and broad target okay and the artisans will say yeah look i'll have a go i'll see what i can do i mean if you brute's your thing i know a lot of men like brute a lot, a lot of ladies like brute so i'll try and make that um and and then of course they will come to market with that product and then people will say oh yeah yeah this sort of smells like brute yeah it's yeah it reminds me of brute it's it's, it's quite good and then something happens then for some reason uh, that artisan is demonised, whoever it may be, and they've all have unfortunately been in the firing line for this, and I feel for them because they're producing they're producing these products because they they think that they will obviously be able to be they'll be accepted by the market, but there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, there's absolutely nothing. Oh, speaking of brute, here he is himself, Chris Sustis. I am a brute myself. You are. You are. You haven't changed at all, have you, Chris? Um, so, look, um, you only ever need one more. That's right. That's that's absolutely true. Anyway, so let's make the distinction. Let's let's pull this thing apart and talk about dupes and 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 copies and fakes. There is a distinction. We need to make this distinction. It's not the same thing, right? And so people get all salty about this and they think, oh, this person has made this product and don't they? Do, do. Just breathe, breathe, and hydrate. I have a news flash. Nothing is original. Hmm? Nothing is original. The shirt you're wearing is based on a shirt that was based on a previous shirt, shirt, whatever, the trousers, the skirt, whatever it is you're wearing is based on something else. It is a form of appropriation. That's what they call it in the art world. But I digress. Let's not 
get stuck on the art world. And let's talk about some other world, a world that I'm sure most of you would be well aware of. Here is a, a, a well-known actor, well-known for all sorts of reasons these, <laughs> these days, I have to say. But this was his, uh, I believe, latest, although it's been out for quite some time now, um, a campaign that he was involved with, the Christian Dior Sauvage, and it was called The New Fragrance, right? Um, and so this hit the market with, uh, you know, a, a, this very sultry sort of photo shoot. Um, the guy sells, I mean, whatever he puts his name to, I would imagine, would sell. He has his, his audience, he has his fans, as does Dior. So it became an amalgam, a collaboration between Dior, that fashion house, uh, and Johnny Depp. Great. And people went out and bought it and they liked it. Um, I, I happened to, 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 to like it as well. But then something happened. As is always the case, uh, another um, uh, firm or firms or companies that are in the aromatic business, fragrance business, that provide these aromatic compounds for all sorts of businesses, not just fragrance businesses, but could be candles, um, you know, the, the, uh, all manner of things, said, we think we might be able to backward engineer this scent. It won't be the same, it won't be the same, but it'd be close. It may be reminiscent of. And I present you with the reminiscent of. Yes, this, in fact, I have one in my hand right here. Uh, this is uh, Saviour Man. Wow. Sauvage, uh, or Sauvage, Dior Sauvage, the one with the Johnny Depp thing, in Australia will set you back anywhere from $140 to $105, right? Uh, Saviour Man, this thing that you can see here, will set you back $14.95, $14.95 is all that will cost you. Now, the first question is, it's not the same thing. Yeah, that's right, it's not. Kind of looks like it wants to be the same thing, but it isn't the same thing. And you can't be wearing it and saying that you feel like you're wearing the same thing. So then I would ask, is it really the same thing? I mean, is it really something that, you know, we're having this... Uh, you know, this, this discussion about, you know, it's, it's trying to emulate or copy or, you know, knock off or, you know, uh, the original um, Johnny Depp, this thing here, right? This is the original. This is the not so original. Um, but when somebody comes in or orders one of these for fourteen ninety five, I would be completely mystified and baffled if they thought they were getting the thing with Johnny Depp, the Johnny Depp brand, right? They're not. That's fine. They're not. The problem I have with this, with all of this, if there is a problem, and I've identified it, is that people get all funny about it. They say, oh, well, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear that. and it's, it's not me. You know, oh, I'm not going to wear that. Or that. That's fine too. But don't be... Just keep it civil, right? Don't be coming down hard on people that wear the stuff. I've got to tell you, it's not my fa This thing here, this saviour thing, is not my favourite thing, but I sell many bottles of it and I sell it for a specific purpose. The person that will purchase this bottle is under no illusion, right, that they're, <laughs> they're not, in fact, purchasing the original Dior Sauvage, right? It's not like... It was a sleight of hand and we tricked them and, you know, all of a sudden, they, you know, look at me, look at me and look into my eyes. I'm going to trick you into buying. So they know that it's not the same thing. And because they know it's not the same thing, then they have to readjust or realign their expectations around all of that. There's a gentleman, and he shall remain nameless, who pops in here. He's, a, he's actually a, in and out of the van all day. He's a courier driver. And he says, listen, um, particularly during the summer months, I'm in and out of this van all the time, and by about 11 o'clock, 
I get a bit woofy. I, th- I, th- I, th- I think I smell a bit. I don't know what it is. But I need something to be able to just spray myself before I deliver a parcel, before I go into every business or household and knock on the door and say, here's your parcel. I need to, I just need something. And I said, sure, try this. He now buys two bottles every, I don't know, I'd say, I'd like to say 12 weeks, right? It's a spritzer. Does it last long? No. Does it have the, the complexity of the original scent? No, no, it does not, right? It doesn't. It just doesn't. It just doesn't, right? And to expect otherwise, you're fooling yourself. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. The, I, 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 think, I think it's a very, very interesting... Qu- oh, okay. We'll look at Tom's question. I think it's a very, very interesting phenomenon. What do you think of the psychological effect of originals versus knockoffs of products? Are we duped into believing a knockoff will be inferior before we even try it? Yes, perhaps. Um, but there's a couple of things here. There's price point. And there's also... I mean, this bottle is not, is not hiding behind the fact that it wants to look like the jo- Do I look like Johnny Depp? Sorry. I just get carried away sometimes. So this bottle, obviously, the sort of, you can see the blue, it's sort of fading and all that kind of thing, you know, that gradation of the glass and all that. It's obviously nodding. We say it like it's a nod. It is a nod to um, Sauvage. It's not the same thing. So you're not, if you're being fooled by buying a $14.95 thing that's, um, that lasts let's be honest, about an hour if you're lucky, probably more about 30, 30 to 40 minutes. It's not going to last long, right? Okay, in the summertime it might last a little bit longer, but in the winter th- this could probably last, might, might even last 20 minutes. I don't know. I happen to, you know, your mileage may vary. So, you know, no one feels like they're getting sucked into buying something which they thought was the real thing and all so on and so forth. And so if we could bring up that quick, can we just bring up that question with, with, with Tom again? Where is he? The psychological, what do you think the psychological effect of originals versus knockoffs? Um, are we duped into believing? Um, no, I, I don't think that, I think people know what they're buying, right? Uh, they know that they're not getting the original. It, it's kind of, but there's something else that's going on here. And, and this is what behavioural economists love, Tom. Yeah, I said behavioural economists. There's a phenomenon called, it's, it's about making a choice with products. There's um, what they call revealed versus stated preferences. So I state that I like Dior, right? This is exactly, you know, this is the product that I would use. I would never, ever use the inferior saviour man. I'd, I'd want to get Dior. That is my stated preference. What I state, though, and what I do can, can change quite a bit. And, and, and there's actually... There have been a number of studies that have been conducted where customers or consumers say one thing and do something totally different. And there are all sorts of, um, uh, you know, there are all sorts of econometric reasons why. There are reasons of coercion. There might be peer pressure. There might be financial pressures. If you're telling me that I spend 15 bucks and I can get this, this perfume versus $140 and I haven't paid my electricity bill this week, well... You know, there are too many factors. So my stated preference is that I want the Dior, but my revealed preference is that I will, in fact, end up buying this and giving it a go, and if it works, I'll just keep quiet about it. Yes, people say one thing and do something else altogether, particularly if it's made public, and particularly when it's made public in these shaving groups and these enthusiast groups. But we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. We had an interesting question um, from Louis. We just had a lot because, where is it? We like variety. Yes, can I see? Uh, We just have a lot because we like variety and if variety is affordable, then have at it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I understand the snobbery. I understand, I only only wear Creed Aventus. Now, Creed Aventus is the most copied, duped, um, replicated scent on the market. Maybe you should do your research on Creed themselves. But that's a topic for another 15 episodes, not just one. Um, look, if you like something and it works for you, wear it. I've got to say there's something interesting that happens on Shave the Man, the group. There are 
there are a couple of gentlemen on there that couldn't care less about stated preferences or revealed preferences. Um, they'll put up a, a shave of the day with a cartridge, a plastic Gillette cartridge razor and a can of shaving cream. And in the beginning you think, oh, this guy's just, he wants to just cause trouble. He's doing it to get attention. And I'll do it again a couple of weeks later and whatever, and they'll say, this is what I shaved with today and whatever. I like those people. I like them. Because not only have they revealed their, pre their preference, they don't feel the need to state a preference. They'll just say, listen, this is what I use. And I think those people, the people that use what they like to use, actually assist and help this particular hobby, if it is a hobby for, for, for some of you, to progress. I think it's a great thing. Now, it's either something's going on here, either that person is having a laugh at us and saying, look, I'm just going to put this up for, for some giggles, or they can't read the room. What? I'm going to join a shaving group and put up pictures of uh, shaving, you know, canned goo? Good luck to him. That's great. I think it's great because it gets the conversation going. There was another gentleman on there. Every two or three days, what's the best razor? What's the best razor blade? What's the best aftershave? What's the best this? What's the best that? What's the best? And people were messaging me and saying, Con, why don't you just throw this guy off? I said, no, leave him there. We need this. We need this in the community. Your journey, you're at a different part of your journey and someone else is at a different part of their journey. I think it's important because it drives the conversation. Um, what else do we have? We have, uh, you're far better off groomed than Johnny Depp is, of late at least. Yes, yes, Johnny's not looking very happy at the moment. He's, I think there's something, Johnny, yes, there's some problems with Johnny. Um, I think we had uh, Leon there. Hello, Leon. Uh, nice, nice of you to join us. I think jeeps are okay. Sensor inspired by classic plastic and classic. Absolutely. Look, if you if you were asked to design a car, you're not going to go back to wooden wheels and steel. You're going to start where all the research and the work has brought us to. You're not going to go back to the very beginning. These people will say, "I like original sense." Okay, I like original sense too. But some of them stink. They're not for me. I don't care how, how you, whichever way you look at it, they're just not for me. Others, though, that might remind me of something else or might be a, a version of something else or might be a, an iteration of something else or might be, a, in, in, to use frag parlance, a flanker of that. For example, you've got, you, you, you know, you've got one scent and there are scents that were released on either side of it. It could be the parfum version or the intense version or whatever. They might not do it for me, but they may have started from a single base. Um, I agree with you. I think dupes are okay. Um, but again, consider this revealed preference versus a stated preference. If you're in a room with people that love fragrances, you're going to, you're going to state that you, oh, look, I would never use $14 Savoir. Man, I'm, I'm, uh, I would never do that. Come on. Come on. Be sensible. There's nothing wrong with it. This, on the other hand, is true as well. Fakes are trash. And what fakes are is fakes are saying, I'm not pretending that, uh, you know, uh, I am Savoir man. I'm actually pretending that I am Savoir, you know, or, or I, am, I am Sauvage, sorry, Sauvage. I'm actually pretending that I am the Christian Dior scent. That I find reprehensible. And that I think is a problem, right? Absolute problem. Let's look at something else briefly, if we may. So there is a, a province in Shenzhen called the, um, I think it's Daken in Shenzhen. And you can, this entire town, village, is dedicated to taking famous works of art and replicating them and doing them time and time again. Uh, I, it was a, some staggering amount. There was a BBC documentary which stated they produce about 120,000 paintings a week. One, just think about this. 120,000 oil paintings or watercolours a week in this particular town, right? And you can, you can pick up all sorts of paintings there. There is the, you know, you can pick up the Mona Lisa, you can pick up a Monet, you can pick up whatever, whatever famous painting you, you like. Just go in there or you can ask, you can commission one and say, listen, I want you to paint the Mona Lisa. Now, let's be serious, folks. Let, let, let's just see this for what it is. 
When you purchase that Mona Lisa, you know you're not getting the Mona Lisa. You're getting a copy of the Mona Lisa, right? Might be a good copy, but it's a copy. And to, to think otherwise, you're fooling yourself. I mean, come on. You become part of this whole... We get sucked into this vortex of originality versus, you know, art imitating life and life imitating art. Let's drop that, okay? You know when you when you go to Shenzhen and you say, can I have a, a copy of the Mona Lisa? You're getting a copy of it. You're getting that person's impression of it. You don't think for one moment that it's the real Mona Lisa, do you? Surely. Yes, homage versus deception. Well, there is that too. Yes. Now, this is an interesting... This, is, this could get quite heated. I'm going to have my coffee. When someone decides to pay homage to a particular artist, they have made a decision based on a number of variables. It could be market forces. People are asking, like the person that said, I'll make you, a, a, I'll make you a, a, our, our version of, of, of Brute. No one is for one moment saying that that person has stolen Brute and called it their own. Now, if they've changed the name of the thing, that could be done for litigious purposes. There are artisans, for example, that have, and I know for a fact, there are a few of them, in fact, who have had uh, some close encounters with larger multinational companies who said, listen, stop doing this. You can't do it. It's too close to our, it's too close to our brand. You've got to stop. Um, and that could have been based on a colour scheme, on packaging. I mean, there's all sorts of things. Homage, though, is, is, is an interesting one. What are we really saying when we're saying we're paying homage to something? We're paying respect. We're saying this is such a wonderful product that we now want to produce it. But surely the person that puts it together knows that they're not producing the original thing. Maybe they're trying to produce a better version of it in their estimation and perhaps even the market's estimation. I mean, the market dictates if something's not good, you take it off the market. It's not going to sit there because you like it and because you think that you know, we can ram this down people's throats. Um, so I guess we need to take a more nuanced and more measured approach to this sort of stuff. Let's not get carried away and say, oh, this person stole this and stole that. and whatever. Everything has been stolen from somewhere else. Everything. Everything, right? It's how you present that to the world that I think is the thing that probably makes people a little bit upset, how it's presented, how it's brought into the world, right? And we don't really want to go too much into that um, because we'll get sidetracked and I won't be able to show you my other uh, magnificent slide, um, which I spent all of three minutes uh, looking for on the internet. Uh, this is a vehicle which is like no other, apparently. I, I find it quite impractical. I mean, I, w I, I don't know where I would park something like that or how I would be able, firstly, how to afford it, but um, it's just an impractical vehicle. But it is one that I appreciate for its engineering and for all the workmanship that's gone into it. Newsflash. It's not this, though. Young man decided to make one of these and ride it down the street. It was made entirely of cardboard. Now, nobody would suggest for one moment that what he was doing was stealing from Lamborghini. No, he was, this was his little project that people said, you can't do that, you're not going to do that, and did it. He actually drove. It was very wobbly, I don't know if you saw it on the news a couple of weeks ago. The thing was sort of, you know, veering off to the left and the right. But nobody stood up and said, I dare you steal the, steal the design of Lamborghini. They should take you to court and, you know, they should have, you, you should see a day in court for this and all this. Come on, come on. Uh, let's be sensible about this. It's it's not it's not rocket science or in in this well actually in this case it is rocket science those vehicles are really quite um, incredible. I guess the intent is is the important thing here, and as a consumer, one of the best things we can do with our consumers is we can vote and say right, I don't want to buy this or I do want to buy this, but if somebody does enjoy, for example, products like this, the fifteen dollar um, uh, fragrance, then you know, good luck to them. Brent, uh, yes, you and I both, I could afford the cardboard one, although this guy's getting a bit of... Tra this guy, that the kid that produced this, is actually getting a bit of traction now. And he's, he's going to make some money, so maybe we can't afford it. I don't know. He's going to... You put it out there and, um, you know, he's going to, to bring it to market. 
Any other questions here? Uh, what is a knockoff? I think I saw something there. Uh, all Sauvage, where, we, where are we? What is a knockoff? Are not all DE's knockoffs of the original patent? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Now, one would argue, no, there are slightly different tolerances. The materials used to make the razor are different. Uh, um, you know, once this thing ran out of patent, everyone, it was open slather. Look, you don't have to go far. There are nations, entire nations and factories, which are dedicated to taking things and making their version of them and doing it at a price which is unbeatable and then saturating a market with them. Now, um, I've never quite been able to understand how people get upset at putting out, you know, let's say I produce, you know, I bring out this design for a glass and then a few weeks later, there are millions of them on the market because someone took that idea and produced, what do you expect? What do you think? Because it's going to happen, right? It's going to happen. But it's not your product. It's their copy of that product. So I guess... I can get upset about, oh, look, that person, well, we had this beautiful brush and they got to, they stole my design and they did all this. It's going to happen, right? It's going to happen. I know that it's this sort of false sense of, you know, oh, look, you know, it's, it's flattery. They've copied you. doesn't matter how much time and effort. We're, we're talking about nations stealing secrets from other nations. They're not going to steal your razor or your brush or whatever it is that you thought you were original with coming to market. Stick with what works for you and this whole business of, oh, I would never support, you know, this particular company or that particular company. Wow, you never support them. Then, then what? You're going to lose sleep over that? Yes, PAA does that with their doppelganger. He says it. Look, he's had to say it. And, and good luck. I like that. Listen, this is what we do. This is our little iteration of it. Take it if you don't like it, go somewhere else. That's fine. Go and get something else. Most artisans at some point or another will capitulate and say, I wasn't thinking of doing this, but I've had so many emails. I've had so many DMs. People have contacted me. People have said, oh, you know, can you do this? Can you do that? What we don't realise is that when you... The artisan is getting messages all the time. They're being bombarded by these messages all the time. Can you please do that? Why can't you do this? Can you make a soap based on this, uh, this sea salt soap from Norway? Can you do you know, all these obscure soaps? Beautiful products. And then the artisan says, well, look, look, if I don't do this, I mean, this, I don't know, maybe I'll, 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 I'll give it a try, see how I go. And they do it. And then when they do it, they're demonised for doing it because they're copying. Whatever. Uh, Please, uh, what else have we got here? Um, you're asking me about whiskey, single malt or blended. Um, look, I've had some good blended whiskies, but I prefer a single malt. Uh, yeah. See, that's another thing, blended. Oh, blended whiskey. Well, no, that's blended. What's blended? You know, come on. What do you think I am, Johnny Walker Red? No. No, there are some blended whiskies which are delightful. But they need to be masterfully done. And there are by far more single malts that I lean towards rather than others. Um, so, ah, what's your favourite? What is this, a whiskey show? I've got a bottle. Get, just get a bottle down there. There's a bottle. Let me just see if I can pick up a bottle. Michael Ah, yes, now let me tell you, that's one of the most expensive whiskies that, that you can... Um, This is what I like. This is what I like. Saneich Kilfoman. Stop. We're not talking whiskies now. Can we? Can we stop? We're not going to talk about whiskies, right? We'll, we'll, that's another. We'll leave that for another another night. Um, Yerasimos, where's Yerasimos? What has he said? Uh, now I'm going to test my Greek. Oreo aroma, kalispera costa, kalispera Yerasime. Efkume nasa kala. There you are. Um, so what do we got? Osavage is fantastic. Who said that? Someone said that. So I've got all these comments. I've, I'm trying to read the comments on the side here. And uh, yes, it is fantastic. I agree with you, Jeff. And thanks for joining the live too. Really nice to, to see you on here. Um, 
if it tastes good, I drink it. Yeah, how do we get on to Stop talking about whiskey. What? Stop talking about whiskey, right? We're talking about other things now. How do you feel about these dupes? Would you reveal, would you state your preference um, in, in a group and then reveal a certain, a different preference if somebody came to your place and, and saw all these things? What's going on there? I'd, I'd like to hear, I'd like to hear your opinions. What we, we say one thing and we do another thing. For example, a lot of people, I mean, tobacco is one of these, one of these things. Oh, I don't like tobacco. It smells, it smells like old lady. Um, you know, I'm not going to. And so if other people hear that in the group, they keep quiet. They'll never tell you that they like tobacco if they're in a group where everyone says that it, it smells like, you know, an old lady's purse or whatever. They're going to state that. They're just going to get quiet about it. And that's not good for people. People need to express themselves and say, listen, I don't care what you guys say. I love Parasso Green, for example. Other people say, yeah, I don't think it does, well, whatever. And they come down on that person, come down hard on that person, and then you never see them again. Now, that's not good for any hobby. Forget stray shaving, any hobby. There are people that are at different parts of their journey, and I think that that should be, we should nurture that. Are there any knockoff products that you prefer over the originals? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I prefer the music you were making once. I was always looking for those sampling loops and thought, I'm sure I heard this. I'm sure I've heard this somewhere before. Was it the Supremes? Oh, was it? No. Um, if that's what I like, I state it. Yes, good on you, Leon. I, um, I, uh, I agree with you entirely. What other comments do we have here? I'm pretty sure Stephen... <laughs> Look, Sarah, hello, welcome. I know he's nowhere near you at the moment. Um, tabac, yeah. What do you think of tabac, Sarah? Do you like it? Um, I know it's kind of very old-fashioned and, you know, I hate... Look, when I was a younger man, I hated it because it just reminded me of... I don't know. I didn't really like it. But now I love it. I love it. I love it. I don't use it often, but I love it. You've got to be in a mood for tobacco because it says, I'm here. I'm here. Right? It grabs you by the scruff of the throat. Mr. Stephen Carter loves Dior Sauvage and tobacco. Shame he has missed this live. Wow. And how would you know that, David? Hey? How would you know that? Discussing other people's fragrances and preferences. Now, that's an interesting point, Leon. Um, yes, doppelganger orange is the preference over chaps. Yeah, look, it's interesting. Um, I prefer the orange over the chaps. Now, there's an example of where, again, we've got to be careful about originals versus dupes. Look, it's a languaging issue. If you say that this is my interpretation of... People think you're a bit wanky, let's be honest. And a lot of these artisans have got to face this all the time. Because, look, someone comes out and says, I'm going to come out with a barbershop scent. What does that mean? I mean, what does it really mean? Is it, It's going to smell like like what? Um, so they come out with their interpretation of it and they say, well, this is nothing like a barbershop scent. Which means that your point of reference is what's making you reveal, or should, should, I, say, should I say state a preference. This is my preference. I prefer that, right? Where in actual fact, if I told you that, for example, there was a there was a, an instance where somebody said, "Oh, what's in a barbershop scent?" and I said, "Look, I'll tell you a couple of ingredients that are in most barbershop scents, and that's lavender and oak moss." And they say, "What? I hate lavender. I certainly don't know what oak moss is doing in it." And yet, alas, these are some of the scents that are in there. So, I guess we should be a little bit more um, circumspect about all of this. Just let's not bludgeon someone if they like a particular thing or not. And also, um, let's consider that when it comes to originals, there probably are none, okay? We'd have to go back to the guy with the cardboard Lamborghini and ask him where he all be where, where it all began for him. Um, I, I One thing that, that dealing with the general public has taught me is that 
uh, you know, and I've said this time and time again, one person's trash is another, another person's treasure. If you like something and it works for you, stick with it. I told you, Elvis Presley loved canoe and he loved brute. Elvis Presley, the, the king, Elvis Presley loved brute. Now, I know the, the, the purists will come in and say, yeah, yes, but it was the, it was the original brute and it's not the same brute as that. Yes, I agree. I agree. But um, Frank Sinatra loved lavender. Frank Sinatra loved it. That's great. Right. Uh, Sarah. Oh, a confession. Yes, I don't mind Tabar's tobacco. Tobac not so much. Yeah. Look, it does polarise people and not a fan of tobacco at all. Right. Okay. Well, I'll shut up then. We used to have tobacco Thursdays. Now it's. Um, but Alex, you're an original. Oh, look, thank you, Alex. That's very kind of you. I, I really appreciate your very kind words. Uh, thank you. We're all originals in our own way. Um, another. Oh, look at Sarah. She's on fire. Sarah is on fire. I don't really care for Creed Aventus knockoffs either. Stephen said he got them from you. He did. He did. And they're all out of stock. Um, yeah, I'm wondering why do I want to get the there's another there's another Spartacus by Ariana and Evans, okay? It's it's meant to be their version of um Creed Aventus. And if you put Creed Aventus and Spartacus or um Creed Aventus and uh, Club de Nuit, which is the fragrance uh, um that Stephen purchased together, there's something that's going on and you're thinking, oh, these don't smell anything like each other. So the olfactory senses are tricking you. It's the brain that fills in. Even if there's a 60 or 70% match or there are notes in there, the brain then fills in the gaps and says, yeah, this smells like. But when you bring the two things together, uh, there's, there's nothing like it. So dupes... Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, for example, I, I like Creed Aventus. I wouldn't buy a decant of it. But the Club and we I've worn it and it's okay. Again, I'm not a very, very big Creed Aventus fan because I'm sick of it. I've actually, it's, it's everyone, everyone wears and it's the, you know, the, oh, it's the top five that everyone should have. Every guy should have this. Every guy should, you know, should wear this on a date and all sort of stuff. Whatever. Whatever. Look, um, so you didn't like it. That's interesting. Uh, I'm trying to convince an artisan to make a soap with the scent of Turkish pepper. Oh, okay. An artisan. Um, I, I wish you luck with, with all of that. Um, some, of them, some of them do um, take this on and others uh, do not and cannot. Um, yeah, look. Eliminate all artisans. Would you like to live in a world like that? Absolutely not. I love what they're doing. Love that they're bringing out these products. And so I don't get caught up in all the, the, the politics and all the brouhaha that carries on. I'm not interested in it. Chalk and cheese. Who's chalk and cheese? Anyway, look, I have revealed my, my preferences. I've stated them and I've revealed them. Just think very carefully about this. Uh, people purchase things um, uh, based on what they like and they won't always reveal those things to you. This is why there's been a phenomenon. Show us your den. Do a video of your den. Do, what is that about? What sort of voyeurism is this that you want someone to, to take photographs of their den? And, and, of course, if there's a video of the den or whatever, some things may have been removed from the shelves, I guarantee you, because not everyone will reveal their preferences. We have stated and revealed preferences and economists, behavioural economists have known this for a long, long time. I guess what I'm saying is that you should just use what works for you. Um, don't worry about all that other stuff, whatever it is. Don't get involved in it. Kirk, my dear friend Kirk, it's lovely to see you on here, Kirk. I hope you're well, my friend. I've been thinking about you. Um, yeah, I hope you're well. Folks, uh, I have taken more than enough bandwidth than I'm prepared to dish out this evening. If there's any other um, comments, uh, please let me know. Kirk has also said good advice. Thank you, kind sir, and um, uh, I hope that you find 
you're looking for a member of staff for your um, for your company, I hope you. It's very hard staff. Oh my god, they get me started on staff. Anyway, um, Tom Wilkie, good day, Tom. Shaved in pics are just cool to see the variety of stuff people have. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I'm wondering whether they don't do a bit of rearranging before. For example, if you're in a Last comment before I go. If you're in a shave group and you've been there for a long, long time and you're someone that people enjoy and interact with and engage with your posts and you have Parasso in your den and you're thinking, hang on, what sort of impression do I want to give here? Maybe you might take the Parasso and just put it out of shot. I'm saying, I don't know. I don't care either way. I mean, I just, it is what it is. You know, we, we share what we want to share or not. So that's it. Leon... Thanks for, I know I rambled on a bit um, because it's, it's actually quite a big topic, but it's, it's something that we should think about. If you like a, four, a $15 perfume, wear it. Who cares? If it works for you and you like it, wear it. And if you want to wear the four, $140 uh, scent, that's great as well. That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, Lenny, love you. She was oh, wonderful was here on the weekend. Great. Great topic, Keg. Yes, and stay safe. Thank you, folks. Look, I really appreciate it. Sorry that I had to shift things across to Thursday to Thursday night. I did it all for Alex because he had visitors last night and he said, Con, can you just shift it? Can you just rearrange your life for me? And I said, for you, Alex, I'll do anything. I'll do anything. 100% Tom Wilkie. Look, thanks very much, folks. I really, really, really appreciate you uh, joining us on the live. We'll be back again next Wednesday. Until then, stay safe and we'll see you in the next live.